Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about my journey to sustainable health and meaningful success. If you're coming back and you've already subscribed, welcome back. Y'all are my people and I love you so much. And if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing by the end of this video. I've already talked a lot about the cult-like nature of Amway, how they control all of your thoughts and your actions, your financial decisions, how you consider your family or how you raise your family. And my most recent video was about the religious aspect of Amway, but today I'm going to just fully drink the Amway Kool-Aid and tell you exactly why people buy into this, because no one actually legitimately joins a cult knowing that they're joining a cult. So these are a couple of audios that I might break into two parts um, and make two separate videos, but I'm just going to be going over some videos that actually explains exactly why people buy into this kind of family or culture that actually is just a full-on cult. Um, and you might wonder why I'm actually drinking Kool-Aid for this video and toward the end of this, whether it's the end of part two or just the end of this very long video, um, toward the end you'll see why exactly I actually relate Amway to um, the beginnings of a new Jonestown. So let's just start with the audio. Amway people are the best. This environment that you guys are in this weekend there's nothing like it out there. Are there other good environments? Here's in my mind the differentiating factor. And I will get back to the fact we have a five-year-old and she's awesome and I could play videos and show pictures but I'm not prepared. I will get back to... I'm going to speed this audio up to 1.25. You can slow it down if you want. Um, but I'm just going to speed it up for the sake of time. I hope. But otherwise she's awesome and anything we love her. Um, so, she is. She's incredible. But being here this weekend, here's what the difference is. Some of you will relate to this, some may not, because you've never even been into anything like this. You're like, this is crazy. But for people, maybe you've been on like some kind of church retreat. Or for me, it would be like a big youth explosion weekend. Or, you know, a big youth concert weekend. Or maybe something for a team that you went away for. And here's what I call those. They're called mountaintop experiences. Where you like, you come, and you come to this event, and you're like, this is the best moment of my life. This is incredible. I just want to stay here forever. Here's the differentiating factor in this business. You don't have to come down off the mountaintop. You can stay there. Because you'll be at your info session this week. You'll be at your team meeting in a couple weeks. You'll be at your phone team with your friend. You don't have to come down off the mountaintop. Because That's actually really key that she's saying that you don't have to come down off of the mountaintop of feeling like you're in this excellent environment where everybody accepts you, everybody loves you. And that is actually true. As soon as they have a function or like a conference, within the next couple of weeks, they have those tickets for the next conference available for purchase. And you're expected to purchase that while you're on that high, while you're at the top of the mountain. And they do keep you in constant environments. There's always meetings to go to. There's always a weekly meeting. And then there's network nights. And then there's social events. And then there's holiday parties. And then there's just like a ton of different events that if you really are like committed to staying in this environment, you could have meetings with these people several times a week and you'll never have to leave that bubble. Because it's real and we're always going to be here. That is so cool. How about uh, a second differentiating factor? There's like motivational speakers. I don't have all the facts, so I don't want to like name names, but there's motivational speakers that you could go to see. Let's say you weren't in this business. We don't need to go see motivational speakers because we already have our own education system. Not being in this business, going to see a motivational speaker, I saw there was a gentleman, um, I don't even know what this is, but it was $600 that you paid before even the general admission to be like in what was called the, the power pavilion. I don't know what that is, but it's $600. Um, and then for a six-day Retreat. I won't say the name, but it's a six day retreat, $5,495. How much, if you come to two of our functions, which would be six days, how much is that? 200 what? Like 200 bucks for, for six days. But here's what really drives me crazy. You said earlier, you know, how inexpensive. This is an education system that no matter what you were going to use it for, it's the most inexpensive become the ultimate you you could be in the world. 
Okay, a couple points. Number one, with regards to all of those networking or those um, other conferences that cost a lot more in order to get to their like VIP pavilion or whatever, I've looked into, I've never actually been to a conference outside of Amway um, just for like success principles, but a lot of, I have like looked into certain conferences that I wanted to go to. Uh, it wasn't plausible at the time, but it's something that I would have met a lot of people. I would have networked with people who actually could have grown my enterprise rather than just going to a conference where everybody already is a business owner. So you're not actually growing your income. You're just washing your brain. But with these other outside um, business opportunities or network opportunities, these conferences that give you the opportunity to network with other people to learn from minds who actually built something of their own and it just gives you a lot more connections and I think that that's something that she doesn't mention at all the fact that at an Amway at an Amway conference you're not networking and you're not growing your business you're only growing your mindset or you're washing your brain but with the outside conferences that actually give you the opportunity to network with people and grow your enterprise that could be priceless. I mean, the kind of connections that you can build in conferences like that, where you actually get into VIP sections, where you're talking to big business owners who might want to do business with you, for the people who actually go to those business conferences and those networking events, those opportunities are invaluable. So it's kind of weird that she's like, for $200, you get the exact same value. You don't get the exact same value. And the education system, it's interesting that she herself is pointing out that, like, you don't have to go to outside information and you can only listen to or you should only listen to uh, the stuff that within this system will educate you because this is comprehensive and this is the cheapest, most valuable information when it's all being spoon fed to you by people who are taking your money. So... Uh, that's just interesting to point out because I used to think that too, that it's like, wow, LTD really provides such a, a comprehensive education, but it's not, it's, it doesn't actually add business in the, add, add value in the business world. You guys actually have a vehicle which to apply this to. I need to know, I need to find out from somebody, the person that goes to these other things, that they're not even the captain of their own ship. What do they do when they come home with it? For real, what do you apply it to? They build their own businesses instead of pouring their money and their time and their resources into a pyramid scheme. That's what they do with that information, ma'am. You take all that knowledge and all that excitement, all that energy you're filled with, and where do you put it? In this business, you're the captain of your own ship. This is something that you own. You do this. Okay, so do you set your own product price points? No? No? What about, do you name your own products? Oh, no, that's actually already named for you. Who is that named by? Oh, right. The actual corporation that owns the company that actually owns the products and all of the legal rights to those products. That's what I thought. Yeah. Our environment draws in people who have seen a lot. I mean, if you look at the cover page of LTDHQ.com, there is, I don't even know the amount of New York Times best-selling books that this man has written, but he said he likes to partner with LTD because I like to partner with people I really admire and who make a difference. Okay, someone else go to LTDHQ.com, LTDHQ.com, and show me where there is a New York Times best-selling author on that page. Because I looked, and all I could find was LTD people. Another New York Times bestseller appears regularly on Fox News, has the upper echelon of clients in the world, has been in our Coliseum functions. And he has freaked out on us. And some of you know who I'm talking about because he said, there's nobody. I've been all over the world and there's nobody like you guys. There's nobody that does what you do. There's nobody that's taking even the youngest of American workers and teaching them about free enterprise and freedom and what America's all about. He's like, you're one of the only people that I poll that actually have hope that tomorrow's going to be better than today. That's how different this is. Okay, this non-existent guy that she's talking about must poll like zero people because there's so many people who have hope for the future and who are excited about the things that they're doing. What? It's just lies. And this is 
I'm sorry, this video and maybe the next one if I do two parts, it is going to be heated because this makes me angry because these are straight up lies. But when you're in the audience listening to this, you believe that this is the only place you can get this kind of hope. And this is the only place you get this kind of opportunity. And that's just a straight up falsehood. And it's angering. <sighs> that's how different it is. Oh my word, Doug had a guest um, in over the summer, our, our summer conference, who kind of sat in. The guy has like Maxwell, um, Joel Olsen. These people are in his phone to call. He was only supposed to come into our event on Saturday night for a little while. What happened Saturday night? I think hunters were up, vendors were up, bakers were up. Well, then there was like an after event. He was like, ah, I better stay for this. I need to see what happens next. Then there was like a hoot owl. He stayed after. His wife had come and she was up in the hotel room and he woke her up and he's like, I couldn't leave. I've never seen anything like this. And that was before he came the next day on Sunday. How cool is it that people who work in the most incredible, according to the world standards environment, say there's nothing like what we have? I think... Interesting that she said she doesn't say that he gets sponsored in business after being in this environment. It's totally awesome. I feel blessed and I'm very, very grateful. Um, in fact, in a one week's period of time, I had three different people that I ended up connecting with. One was a call from Amway. Like some of you guys, maybe if you're platinum and above, you'll get like a referral name and number. I got one of these and I called the girl. Well, come to find out, um, She's already in business. She's brand new. She got in business with her dad who's in Pittsburgh, and she just wanted to connect with somebody that was in Amway and Erie because she was living in Erie at the time. So her dad's in Pittsburgh. We're in Erie. She calls the corporation. They give her our number. I realize she's already sponsored by her dad, and I'm like, well, I'm excited for you. I know the group. I'm, they're great. I'm excited for you. I'm so, and she goes, you know what? She goes, my dad just restarted this business again. And him and my mom, when I was younger, they were in this business. And she goes, I couldn't wait to get started with my dad because those were the best days of my life when my parents did this. There was always people coming over to our house and making phone calls and we'd have picnics and we'd do potluck after, you know, whatever, <laughs> white elephant, whatever else you guys like. Um, but she said like her best memories growing up were the couple of years her parents did this business together and now her parents were split and her dad restarted and she couldn't wait because she wanted to have that kind of environment in her life again. I had another person message me, they're not, Churches provide the same kind of community, and so do a lot of different groups and sports and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that she's using that anecdote of a girl who obviously now has a family that is torn apart by divorce. Um, that really sucks. That's, But that's not... I guess it's just like that's yet another thing that it's like your children will thank you for raising them in this environment because this is where they'll have the most fun and the most community where, yeah, they might have a lot of people coming over to their house all the time, but it's just like there are other ways, there are better ways, there are less damaging ways of not tearing apart families because of finances and because of different things. I mean, it's just it's frustrating. This, this girl has a childhood memory of an Amway meeting that might have been fun having, you know, friends over. But it's like, okay, that's fine. You can provide that other ways, not just Amway. I know in the group they're registered IBO, but I kind of call them a customer VIP IBO. You don't really see them, but they buy products. They love you. They send you little I love you messages. They're awesome. And this person messaged me and they were like, you know, I just want to make sure I have the info session information right. Because honestly... For as many groups as I've been around, and this is one of the, do, do, do you, you know people that have done everything? They've tried everything. They've been around a lot of different groups of people. And she goes, I still can say with all my heart, being around, and why are all these Amway people? <laughs> the Amway people are the best. Where's your info session this week? Woohoo! Come on out! Then I show up at the info session. There's a guy, I don't know how many, how long it's been since we've seen the guy. And he just came in, and he looked at Steve and I, and he goes, you have to know, I just had to come in for a breath of fresh air. Because you really do live in a bubble. He goes, I just had to come back and get in the bubble for a little while, take a couple breaths. Because you're so different. And this. The reason why it's a breath of fresh air when you're coming in is because no one's allowed to talk about anything negative going on in their life. So everybody is happy or at least acts like they're happy. And that's a really important distinction because 
When I was in the business, every single meeting, it does not matter what was going on in my life, I was supposed to show up happy and just like joyful. And I do a lot of videos previous to this talking about the expectation of never ever telling anybody that something is at all wrong in your life. And that environment of fresh air is everybody being super positive and that's creating this bubble, but no one is actually allowed to bring anything negative in. So there's a very important element of mind control that she's not mentioning. And this is so different. I don't know who could walk away from this ever. Our environment is unique, but check this out. Our methods of education, growth, and improvement are not. Anyone who is working towards anything great, they're reading about it. They're listening to it. They are attending. They're associating with other people. They're searching. They're taking action. All the things that Doug talked about today about being a pilot. If you run from this because of a system of discipline and education, what you're actually running from is any kind of success. Because... Oh, okay. Man, I did not think I had this much to talk about on this audio in particular. No, if you run from this, it's not because you're running from structure and discipline. It's because you actually can identify that your money and your time are going towards someone else's dream at the top of the pyramid. You're not running away from your own success. You're actually breaking away from this cult-like bubble of an environment that will suck you of everything that you have. And you're it, you're actually going after a life that you want and going after your own dream. And just like what she said, anybody who's successful at anything is listening, they're attending, they're reading, they're getting information and they're constantly growing themselves. That's possible outside of this business. So she's trying to make it sound like if you quit, if you run away from this just because you're afraid of commitment and discipline and a structured education system, that's not why people quit. But for some reason, when you're sitting in the stands listening and you're like, yeah, this is where I need to be because if I am, if I'm going to quit, it's because of my fear of success and I'm running away from success. It's not. It's not. You actually have the right train of thought, but this kind of stuff makes you feel like if you quit, you're backing down on your own dream. success your whole life if that's why you run from this because it will take discipline it will take education but I'm so grateful for it I am so grateful for my upline our upline has always been in our corner Joseph and LaDawn Derek and Sarah Doug and Amy Joe and Mary Beth LaDawn all right she goes on to brag about her Amway upline and all that but from this particular audio I want you to just get from, from all of this, run. Run fast, run hard. Run away from Amway and run toward your dreams. Run toward your family, your friends who actually care about you. Run toward all the things that are going to add to you. Yes, use discipline. Yes, educate yourself on what you wanna do, but do not for the life of you stay in this business because you think that this is the only way that you're going to succeed. Please, I'm begging you. I have been out of Amway for, I believe at the time of this release, it will be 51 or 52 weeks. So it's at the one year mark. Here we are. And I have nearly 300 subscribers and it's growing every single day. And I am growing, I'm changing, I'm feeling better every single day. If you watch any of the videos on my channel, you will see tremendous amount of growth and tremendous amount of progress. And it all started when I left this business that was draining me of everything I had. So please, for the love of God, <laughs> run away. <laughs> okay, here we go. Because you're family. Um, I have a Vietnamese foster brother that stopped by and stayed for 10 years. I have a... Uh Cambodian foster sister that lived with us for six years. I have uh, a sister-in-law that's from Panama. And uh, the last one that got married, my brother Michael, his sister, uh, my sister-in-law, Courtney, uh, my brother's wife, she's black and from Detroit. 
Okay? Uh, from the day, yeah. So, a matter of fact, they just had their first baby, and their baby's name is Kier, which means dark one in Gaelic. Like, well, what's white one mean? You know, but anyway. Her Please tune in to the fact that he just listed all of his non white relatives. Uh, it gets weirder and a lot grosser as this audio goes on. I guess I should, maybe should put a trigger warning that we're talking about race. I don't, I don't really know, but there's so much. I'm sorry. I asked her, so what's the big name? She said, Kira. So what does that mean? A dark one. I said, what's white one? She said, Brian. But anyway. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going I'm to turn this over to Karen, but I'm going to come back up and be really quick, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this team and this family. Now, what is family? Well, typically, they're pretty much non-judgmental. You know, if you mess up, they still love you anyway. You know, they expect you to be better, but they still love you. You know, if you make bad decisions, they correct you, but they still love you. And they don't cash you out and, you know, throw you to the wolves because you made a bad, dis bad mistake. Um, but, you know, it was an environment where... Interesting that she says that family is non-judgmental and they won't just cast you out as soon as you make a mistake, where if you know anything about my Amway story, the second that I needed to take a break from Amway to go to the doctor because I was balding in the back of my head from stress, they stopped talking to me. Literally have not word, uh, heard a word from my upline except for one phone call per woman on my upline to ask me if I was going to the next conference. Other than that, they know nothing about my life, except for if they've watched my videos, um, which I have a suspicion that they have, so. But anyway, yeah, family, non-judgmental, will not just kick you out at the first sign of weakness or uh, mistakes. I, I didn't make a mistake leaving them, though. I will say that. I did not make a mistake. You know who my real family is? Is my real family, my biological family, and the friends that I surround myself with, because those are the people that as soon as I realized that I had really messed up and damaged a ton of my relationships through Amway, they welcomed me back with open arms and they helped me recover from all of the damage that Amway did to me. So, yeah, uh, good on ya, ma'am. That's what family is to you. Same for me. That's what we sold out to with this LTD team. What we work to build here is this LTD, but it's uh, this LTD team, but it's so much more than that. We are working to really build a huge family. And Jennifer back on this morning, she said, you know, everybody needs somewhere to belong. And when I got started, that was me. I needed somewhere to belong. That is the most key point of everything. I mean, it gets weirder from here, but that's Really, what it boils down to is everybody needs some place to belong, and Amway preys on people who are looking for a sense of belonging, which is like one of their most primal needs, is a sense of belonging. And so they definitely tend to focus in on people who are just looking for their place in life, looking for their calling, looking for something that's going to fulfill them, looking for a community, looking for anybody who's going to accept them and love them no matter what, and these people put on that show and put on that facade for the newcomers that we accept you we love you and all of that and it doesn't get it doesn't take until m when you're actually deeply into the business when you start realizing that you're losing bit of bit by bit by bit of control over your life i mean it's kind of like it's like that analogy how do you boil a frog um, you don't just put a frog into boiling water because they'll just jump right out. They'll sense that it is boiling water. But what you do is you put a frog into room temperature water that they can't really tell any difference. And then you slowly turn up the heat until the water is boiling. And they'll never actually detect that the water has gone from room temperature to boiling water because they are just acclimated in it. And that's how they get people into this. They start you out with the room temperature, nice little tempid, <laughs> tepid, tempid, I don't know. They, they start you out with that like nice room temperature water that you feel so comfortable in and just slowly they turn up the heat and they turn it up until you don't even realize that you're in a fully blown cult. You didn't think you were joining a cult when you started. 
you just thought you were going to be around a lot of people that are happy and positive and loving all the time. And really it's like, no, you, you straight up, you straight up get boiled in this business because you don't even detect things changing. All because you wanted some place to belong. I needed people to love me exactly who I was and where I was at that point in my life, which was a complete mess. I was so ugly inside and out. But I needed someone who didn't see me as I was, but that could see me where of who I could be. And that would pull that best out of me and not judge me. And that's what this team provided for me and allowed me a safe environment to grow and become better. You know, you heard Coach DeBerry say this morning, the best, his main goal in putting together a team was it's all about building a family. And when you... You embrace that concept. That's what Brian and I try to do. We don't just put people in business. You know, we, we bring people into our family and we get intertwined in their lives. You know, our children's lives, they, they're best friends and, and our families just, we, we care about people. No, they do. They get intertwined in your life to the point where really there's nothing in your life that isn't affected by Amway. When I left Amway, I left, all, I left practically all of my friends. I only had one friend outside of the business by that point. I left the people that I considered family. I left everything. I mean, I left the audios. That was the only thing I listened to. I, didn't, I hadn't listened to music seriously for like two and a half years. I, I had never read any books outside of the Amway business for two and a half years. So I started reading new things. I started listening to new things. I started hanging out with people who cared about me. And everything changed even my relationship with god and my religion and my spirituality everything shifted because of amway so yeah they do they really do get intertwined in your life and that is what she's trying to say is that if you really want to get people into this business and you want them to stay in the business for a long-term commitment of financial every single month they're paying for your products that's how you do it you get them emotionally invested into the family of the business and you get intertwined in their life so that when they try to leave they realize how much you're involved in every aspect of their life more than we care about the dollar bill and that's what makes the team so special you heard toby talking about you know maya being his brother you heard joe talking about danny being his brother and mary beth was up here talking about renata you know growing up and being her sister and you know, um, as we started this business, that's the same thing for us. Our downline and our crossline, they became like family. As a matter of fact, they became even closer than family to us. And here's why. But you're not allowed to exchange contact information with your crossline. So when I left, there were crossline who had left before me that it took me months to track down their contact information so that I could get a hold of them and reconnect with them because we weren't allowed to exchange contact information with people who were cross-line to us, which means they're not our upline who sponsored us and they're not our downline who we make money off of because they were sponsored by us. But anybody outside of that line, that direct line of sponsorship, you weren't even allowed to exchange contact information with them. So how in the world is she saying that these people, including cross-line, are closer than family? Unless you improperly cross-lined. That's a whole different story. Because While we were over there, the Super Bowl was going on. So I found a big restaurant to watch the Super Bowl, and everybody in there was these uh, Instagram. I, um, you know, check in Instagram, and I see that there's a uh, party going on at my house. I'm in Australia. Yeah. Uh, Frank is, uh, he has a very uh, different background than Manny owns, the, you know, multiple apartment complexes. He's in his 50s. He, uh, uh, has a lot of rental homes. He's a uh, president, uh, vice president of a bank, and uh, very successful uh, yeah, outside of the business. And uh, let's just say um, he didn't win the dance off. Like the French kids wanted to know he, what he was doing on my rug, and I wasn't really sure. I'm like, oh, oh, this is bad. This is bad. This it shocked me what they asked next because you know they were, they were getting very friendly and just very talkative. They said, uh, they said those are your business words. I said, yeah. They said, well, they're black. And I said, well, Frank's not. Um, they were like, well, that's obvious. But anyway, you have to understand, this is just coming out of the Ferguson and everything that was happening out there, right? You have to understand, by the time it gets overseas, they think, just like they used to think years ago, that every American is a cowboy, right? So you come here. I thought there were, you know, kangaroos were going to be in your hotel room when you went to Australia. And I'm in Sydney and realize there's no kangaroos in Sydney. It's just a big city. 
We all stereotype, right? So then their, their interpretation of, of America right now is just this racial divide and this and And you know what I know? This is just what I believe. That there's a lot of people that want you to think that way. Because if we can galvanize, galvanization actually causes people to take action. And I believe, this is my belief, I believe both political parties like division. Because it causes people to action. And so if we can paint a picture of how horrible everything is, and how bad everything is, now listen, can it improve? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question. For white people, or lighter skinned, or, or what? here's how we do it. It's an example. Leadership is not what you say, it's what you do. It's not, I'm going to say this again, leadership, this business is all about leadership, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And then people copy what you do. Does that make sense? You heard that up here. Like, like, I want to be the example for my team. So when was the last time an Asian was at dinner with you? Last night. Dinner? When was the last time an African American was breaking bread? It's not what you teach when everybody's equal. Show them everybody is equal. See, my children, because of this business, Tommy Bo is Uncle Tommy. These children are going to grow up because of this business. You want to talk about growing up colorblind? This is all they see. They see you every day. They see our team. One of the things I love about and white people are not colorblind. All, well, maybe they are. All they see is green. It does not matter what race you are, what background you are. As long as you can give money to paying for the Amway products, then you're fine. This whole thing is like, because your family, that's what the audio is. So the fact that he's going into race, this was recorded in 2015. So this was after Trayvon Martin. This is after the start of Black Lives Matter, but um, it was five years ago. Are you trying to make it out that... Amway is the only place that you're going to see multicultural relations and like different interactions between different people of different races. What are you trying to say, sir? Let's find out. One of the things I love about our info sessions, you come to them, what do you see? Every background imaginable. All over the world. You know what Amway's doing? Breaking down barriers. Because see, I might grow up in an environment where I... No, stop it. No. Am I breaking down barriers? Okay, I get it. You think that you're so multicultural that, you know, there's so many people of different colors and backgrounds and all across the world, and I get that. And you know what? They used to say that all the time in our info sessions. They would say, look around. This is world peace. This is world peace. You can see people of every color, of every nation in this room, and this is what world peace is. This is our utopia. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't say utopia, but that's the picture that they're painting, right? Everybody is welcome. And you know what? Here's the thing. And when I first listened to this, I, my blood was boiling. Because if you have seen any video of my channel, especially like recently since everything with George Floyd happened and all of that, I have spoken up about that and I have definitely given my opinion about like just being loving and accepting and Black Lives Matter, all of this. So this is why I have an issue with this. And I'm going to link down below in the description of this video, a documentary on Jonestown. It was from, it was about the People's Temple led by Jim Jones. And the People's Temple are the people who are known for the the Guyana suicide or mass suicide, the, the Jonestown massacre where they all drank Kool-Aid and they all died. But if you watch this first, it was like the first seven minutes of the documentary, all you see is that Jim Jones was creating the only integrated church of that time. And I, I mean, I'm not sure how true that is, but that's how he made people feel, that it didn't matter what color you are, or you were, it didn't matter where you came from you were loved and you were accepted and like this is a place where everybody belongs and that's how he got so many people to join him and that's what i have a problem with with this audio is the fact that he's trying to make it out to be that look around this room this is world peace and it's the same kind of stuff i mean i've already covered Everything from the behavioral control, the mental control, the financial control, the control that people have over their families, um, the control that they have over their um, religion, and the amount of mind control and 
seclusion and isolation from anything of the outside world. I mean, it seems extreme to say that this is the foundation for another Jonestown. However, when he starts talking about this being the only place where you can see people peaceably getting along because of their different colors of skin and their different races and cultures, it's just dangerous. And it's actually, I don't know if it's insulting or just infuriating the fact that he's trying to appeal to people of different cultures or I guess people of color and he's trying to appeal to them that this is the place that, they're, that they belong and this is the place where um, there is no division between races. And uh, really the only reason why they recruit people is so that they can get their money. So it's just so, it just, it exploits people. It's so manipulative. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Well, I judge you based on what I've learned, and you judge me based on what you've learned. But well, once you get to know people, and you're together with people, you know what you realize? Pretty much all just alike. We have way more common. We may have different cultural differences and stuff like that, but this business, I believe since 1959, it's been bringing people together around the world. Well, I believe most of the rest of the world's goal is to separate, divide, separate, divide. He just separated and divided. He just created the us versus them mentality that within Amway, you're safe. You're all accepted. You're all good. You're loved. But outside in the world, they hate you because of who you are. They hate you for everything. And they'll, they will attempt to segregate you. And that's, this is the kind of thing that he is, is saying. It is infuriating the fact that he says that, you know, they'll try to create an us versus them. They'll try to create separation and division. And that's exactly what he's doing in this audio. And that is why it's so dangerous. It's because it started with just people wanting to belong. All people have that desire to belong. So they prey on that. But now he's specifying and he's getting really particular and, and actually saying that people of color won't feel accepted or loved or like they belong anywhere except for in Amway. It is just so, ah, it's so infuriating. Another thing I want to point out uh, toward the end of his video or toward the end of this audio, uh, he lists a bunch of people and all of these people are in his like upline or in his like kind of in the same region. He's naming people that other people would know because they're also up on that stage. They're also giving these talks. And here's a key thing about Amway and family is that when you get into those smaller uh, circles, when you get into those night owls, when you get into those um, like more intimate settings, those are qualified settings. And the reason the, the, what makes it qualified is you have to have a certain amount of PV, you have to have a certain amount of volume running through your business, and you have to have a certain amount of legs in your downline. Like you have to have sponsored so many people and they have to have sponsored so many people. So you might, you actually have to have a certain size pyramid in order to get into those settings so that you can build those closer relationships with your upline and with your cross line and the people who are your running buddies that's what qualifies you. You're not just in this business being like, yeah, this is my family and we get to hang out all the time. No, you get into the business, you're invited to the weekly meetings. That's it. Sometimes they have night owls that include the entire team, but most of the time those night owls are exclusive and you have to earn an invitation to get there. And the way you earn that invitation is by making a certain amount of contacts, by doing a certain amount of work, by having a certain amount of legs, or by having a certain amount of money running through your business. So those family qualifiers are specifically money driven. 
They say that it's a family. They say that they'll never abandon you and that they'll never judge you. But every single thing you do in this business is judged by the amount of money and the amount of work that you're putting into your business. But then they'll call it family. They'll intertwine themselves into your life in every single aspect so that you can't leave without completely uprooting your life. Like if you are watching this and you've left Amway, you know exactly the amount of uproarous, like completely uprooting my entire life last year and the amount of emotional grip that they have on you. And then that insulting segment talking about this is the only place that you'll feel accepted if you're a person of color or if you are from a different culture than the majority. It. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments because I am speechless. And if you want to go further into this topic, please look at the, do the documentary that I'm linking down below. It really is only the first seven minutes, but honestly, if you go through that entire documentary, the only thing that Amway is missing is physical and sexual, like systematic abuse. Although there's definitely a lot of uh, private stuff that goes on that people don't really talk about and I don't want to, to risk uh, legal ramifications by calling people out, but yeah, uh, this is a straight up cult. If you haven't already been convinced, uh, this set of audios definitely proves that they are specifically targeting people who feel like they need a sense of belonging and they're specifically targeting people of color. That's all for today. <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, please share this if you really want to get the message out and subscribe. Please join the squad. Uh, we generally have a good time. I feel like I keep saying this. These are heavy topics because it's heavy times and honestly we're all just trying to make it here and I'm trying to spread awareness of this poison that these people keep shoving down people's throats, trying to make them feel like they have a sense of belonging or that they will only succeed if they stay in this business. And it, <laughs> to my last video on YouTube, I will continue to say that there are other ways, there are better ways. And with every ounce of my energy, I want to prove that to you, my people, my squad, that success is 100% possible and more probable than sticking in this Amway business. So I love you all so much and uh, yikes. <laughs> okay. <laughs>